there's a lot of social pressure going saying if you want to change the world, the way you change the world is as a consumer. It's through what you buy. If you only bought ethically, you would change the world. And to me, actually, we need to be producers of our reality, not just consumers of our reality. We need to change the economy and how things are produced if we're going to save the environment. We need to have the way we live be more ecological, sustainable, and community-based. So for me, it's part of a whole process. I'm part of a credit union, I'm a housing cooperative, part of a working cooperative, because I think we need to develop a sustainable way of living, and the, all those are part of it. One of the problems that the worker collective I was involved with had was that it did not own. It did not own its property, and that meant that we were partially at the whim of the market. Ownership of a building, like some of the other co-ops I've lived in, um, the ownership of your house, the ownership of your workspace, the ownership of just the physical physical space gives you a lot of ability to make innovations in your business structure or to make innovations in your living structures because you, you aren't worrying about this threat of property removal or the threat of being unspaced. I live in a community right now where we have a huge beautiful yard, it's a quarter acre land, we call it the orchard, there's five units and a common space and the main economic benefit is that I would never have been able to afford to live in a place like that if it weren't for collectively going in on it. When we first bought it, it was two houses, which um, one split level, the other was divided in half when with a big uh, garage underneath it, and we basically gutted one of the houses, lifted up, moved it over, uh, and rebuilt a, a big chunk of it. and. We did that all collectively. Um, we had none of us were construction people, but we had some help from a contractor that showed us what to do. We did have to pay for some of the work, um, but a lot of it was labor and materials, and we just learned how to do it as we went. And that's another thing that again would not have happened with with just uh, if I was living with my sort of single family unit, looking for places to live together and create co-housing type community um, for years and we did this in a, in a few different steps. We started by um, living in rental places together and then some of us were able to buy a house together that we lived in together and then when we were able to move into this larger space. Um, but there was never the perfect space that you could just buy uh, at the you know, at our income level. <laughs> so it was always going to be that we were going to have to buy something that was going to take some work. Um, and you know, it's taken a while, to, but two years is not too bad in the scheme of things. That's about as long, how long we took to do all this construction. Um, and it, we all learned a lot. It's a great experience for the kids to <laughs> know that you can um, refashion something into what you want it to be. Between the two, you know, I don't make as much working where I do, but um, and I also don't pay as much living where I do <laughs> as if, you know, whereas if I were in a traditional model, I would be, to, to have what I have where I live, I would be having to pay a lot more and and in order to, to do that, I would be having to fight to get paid a lot more. <laughs> it just seems to make sense to me that you would not want to have to check your democratic rights at the door and wherever, you know, you go.